So um, let's try to derive um, the formula above instead of an intuitive point of view. Let's try to derive using a rigorous this Markovian property of conditional probability. Okay. So um, so basically, we're interested in. Uh, This conditional probability, uh, conditional probability, and uh, what happens is we can actually uh, write this as a sum. So, uh, using the formula, so a given b is equal to a intersect with e given b plus a probability of A intersect with E complement given B. Okay, so this is a feature in the sanity check quiz of lecture one. So then this conditional probability can be then written as, this is actually X3 equals S, but X2 is S given X1 is R plus x3 is s and x2 is r so keep this in mind so x equals s and x equals r are two uh, mutually exclusive uh, events so um, then we have this is x1 equals r okay and further we write down these two probabilities using a definition of conditional probabilities. So, uh, so for example, so let's try to uh, so write down. So this is one formula we're going to use, and another formula we're going to use is so if we have uh, three events, let's say uh, we have. For example, this A E, so A intersect with E condition on B. This is actually A probability of A condition on E and B, okay, times the condition probability of E given B. So, so this is actually by a definition of a condition probability. So what happens is then uh, here the first term becomes x3 is s and given x2 is s x1 is r times x2 is s given x1 is r. So plus, this is x3 is s, given x2 is r, x1 is r, times probability of x2 is r, given x1 is r, all right? So this is, uh, this step we used, uh, so this step we used the property of conditional probability. Property of conditional probability. Okay. So next, what happens is uh, we're going to use. So this step we're going to use Markovian property. In that, so x. 3 only depends on what happens at x2. So uh, here, x1, it does, doesn't matter. So right here, we use Markovian property. Sorry. 
So uh, this should be x2. This s. x1 is r. Plus x3 is s. x2 is r. x2 is r. x1 is r. All right. The first one is uh, not ring to not ring. So we have, this is 0.9. And the second one is uh, uh, from ring to not ring. So uh, I believe this is 0.6. And uh, this is uh, from ring to not ring. So this is 0.6. Lastly, it's uh, from ring to ring. So this is... Uh, uh, coincides with the formula we had above. All right, so now we're ready to uh, formally present the general Chapman Kamagraph equation. So uh, let's just, in short, let's just to say it's a CK equation. So, um, it's curious about, in general, what is the, the transition probability? So it's going to be uh, from state i to state j. And we have uh, m plus m, so totally uh, m plus m steps. So what happens here is, again, we assume our state space is countable. So the sum is ranging from k equals 0 to infinity. So the k uh, intermediate state. The transition probability from i to k, okay, after n steps, multiply with the transition probability from k to j. Um, and after n, m steps, okay. So, um, and this applies um, for all i, j, and for all m and n that are greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So the proof is extremely similar uh, to what we had uh, right here. So using conditional pr probability and so this step, so I forgot to remark here, so this is Markovian uh, property. Um, It's uh, for general, like we have uh, infinitely many of uh, intermediate states for our uh, stochastic processes to uh, jump into. Okay. So for those of you who, who are very familiar with linear algebra, you might find this formula uh, looking very familiar. So actually, uh, for if we denote, so, uh, the transition probability as a matrix. So for example, is a is a matrix of n step uh, transition oops n step transition uh, probabilities. So um, IE it's ij entry is the n step transition probability from state i to state j. Okay. Then we have the following very elegant uh, relation that is uh, so. Um, So this is a matrix of m 
plus n steps of transition probability. This is actually um, the matrix of n step transition multiply with the matrix of m step transition. So uh, let me emphasize these matrix. So these matri matrices are all square. Okay. So that uh, the matrix multiplication is well defined. So let's back to example one. Uh, what happens is, um, let's say, uh, for example, so P which is uh, P1. So this is one step. So this is one step. This is one step. This transition probability matrix. So uh, which is, so for example, uh, so again, let's recall. So the ring is state zero, not ring is state one. So from state zero to uh, state zero, we have 0.4 probabilities. From state zero to state one, we have 0.6 chance. And here we have from state one to state zero, we have 0.1. And from state one to state one, we have uh, 0.9. So what happens is, uh, So the two-step transition probability, it then defined by basically it's just p times p. So we have 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, 0 0.9 times. So uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, and 0 0.9. So what we did just now. So we have basically four entries and uh, we computed the probability of x3 is s and x1 is r. Oops. So this is like uh, this is like from state zero and two steps later we're at state one which means we are pretty much interested in computing uh, this entry so uh, let's just ignore other entries all right so if we consider this entry it's from state zero to state one so we're essentially computing uh, this row multiply with this column okay so what happens is uh, so we'll have this is a uh, 0.4 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 times 0 0.9 so uh, we'll see more examples in the next video